Hey everyone and welcome to this new books haul video. I'm Minx Laura123. I've got some new books and in this video I'm going to show you them, tell you about them and hopefully give you some ideas for books that you would like to read. Now if you've got any book recommendations for me please comment down below. Okay so uh, yeah let's get started. Right I'm just going to kind of tidy these up a bit, get a little bit more organised Okay, right. So first of all, I'm going to show you some uh, proof copy pre-release books that I've been sent. Um, I'm also waiting for a couple more in the post, which is really exciting. So when I get them, I will, of course, show you them as well. Um, but for now, I've got two to uh, show you. So I'm going to start off with this one by the lovely Luke Palmer and it's called Grow. Now I'm calling him lovely because he was very lovely and friendly to me on Twitter. Honestly, I get so fangirl when authors like like my tweets or message me back. Like it's so cool. I'm a very proud bookworm. So, you know, <laughs> I have so much respect for authors. They're brilliant. Um, but yeah, this book just sounds so good. And uh, I'm so excited to have received this proof copy. So yeah, Luke Palmer, it's called Grow. And I just love this cover. Can we just say about the cover? Like, I just absolutely love it. I love the tree. I'm a big like tree lover. If you're new to my channel, you know that now. If you're a regular viewer, you know anyway, I'm a bit of a tree hugger. Um, but yeah, I love the tree. I love the guy just kind of sitting there. You can see like kneeling down obviously he's got a lot of stuff on his mind he's thinking he's feeling emotional so like the whole cover just to me is just absolutely fantastic so yeah this book grow by luke palmer comes out on i've got the press release right here uh, on the 1st of july so not too long to wait and it's his debut novel as well this is a young adult book and yes i know i'm old i'm 41 i read young adult books yeah i admit i just I, you know i read the books that i want to read and i've always been in that mindset that if you want to read something it doesn't matter if it's you know for a certain age or whatever like if you like a book you like it you know um but yes yeah, so this is a young adult book and uh, i'm going to tell you a bit about it but before i do i just want to read this quote that i saw uh, on the press release from the book so i just thought this was really like i just yeah anyway let me read it to you so it says if you leave a place empty and uncared for, Josh, something will come in and fill it in a garden so is inside your heart. And the seeds that blow in the breeze are most often weeds. They'll choke that space if you let them. I just thought that was like proper intense, like really well wrote. Um, so let me tell you about the book. But actually, 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 before I do, I want to say a huge thank you because not only did I get the book, which I'm excited about, I got a little gift, look. And how apt. It's called Grow and there's some seeds. <laughs> I just thought that was really cute. I opened the package and I was like, oh, I've got the book. I've got the book. I was really excited. And then I just saw the little packet of seeds. I was like, oh, my God, that is so cute. These are Livingstone Daisy, enchanting flowers for uh, terraces, rockeries and borders. Oh, we're definitely going to put these in the garden. I'll get Nathan, my fiance, uh, to help me out because I'm not very good at plants and stuff. <laughs> I like them. I'm just not very good at doing it. So uh, we're definitely going to do these. They are going to go in the garden. I love that. It's such a cute little like thing to put with a book. Really cute. Um, so let me tell you um, about the story. Okay, so it says 15-year-old Josh is an average football playing teenager with plenty of friends until his father is killed in a terrorist bombing. Struggling to cope with grief, Josh withdraws from friends and family but begins to find himself targeted by a white supremacist group as a potential recruit. He has the support of unlikely accomplice Dana and together they find a fragile peace in the garden that they tend together. Will he be able to find the strength to resist the group's violent leader and plant something good in the space that grief has left inside him? Oof, it's, yeah, it's going to be a proper emotional, thought-provoking book. Um, this kind of reminds me uh, of an author that I, I love, and I've read a lot of his books, Mohammed Khan. He's, uh, he's done a similar book to this, but not similar, but that kind of, you know, vibe and stuff. Um, but yeah, I just think this sounds really, really good. Uh, it says here it's tense, unflinching debut, um, dealing with like teen radicalization, investigation of our current social landscape woven through with redemptive strands of love, friendship and nature. So yeah, it just sounds really, really good. So that is Grow by Luke Palmer. Uh, the other book that I've been sent is a mystery thriller. Um, I love my thrillers. You know that if you're a regular viewer. It's called The Perfect Guests by Emma. I would say that. Is that Rouse? Roose? Rouse? I don't know. Um, but yeah, <laughs> that, that, that's who it is. The Perfect Guests. And it, this one comes out, it says, on the 24th of June. 
Um, so, yeah, I mean, I don't know if this is going to be the actual end cover because I assume, like, this is the proof copy. Things change with, like, covers and stuff, so you never know. Um, but it says here, you are accordingly invited to Raven Hall. I love this chandelier and the orange and, like, look at the floor, like, the checkered floor and stuff. Ooh, it just looks cool. I, I'm one of these people that, oh, there we go. I think that's going to be the final um, cover. Um I'm one of these people who just really, really likes book covers as well. Like, I know they say you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but like, I'm sorry, I am going to judge a book by its cover. I do like a nice book cover. Um, and this is great. I just love it. It just looks great. Um, so let me tell you about this one. Oh, look, I just saw that it says um, that this book is perfect for fans of Lucy Foley's The Guest List, which I loved, and Lisa Jaws' The Family Upstairs, which I loved. So that's good. Uh, it's gripping and twisty about two women, one house, and a lifetime of secrets. Cool. Sounds so good. Eight strangers, one deadly invitation. Welcome to Raven Hall. After years of abandonment, Raven Hall has been restored to its former glory for one night only. It's playing host to an evening of murder mystery. Ooh. The guests have gathered, the roles have been cast, but someone is playing a sinister game, one with devastating consequences. And uh, as the guests are about to discover, the truth is much darker than fiction. Raven Hall is waiting for you. Oh wow! I mean, come on, that sounds freaking amazing. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to a murder mystery in that book. I've never actually been to um, a murder mystery. Let me know in the comments section down below if you have ever been to some form of murder mystery. Um, so yeah, once again, as I say, this comes out on the 24th of June. The Perfect Guests and Grow comes out on the 1st of July. So look out for those because, you know, it's all good. And as I say, I have some seeds as well, which we're going to put in the garden later on. Right, so let me show you the other books that I have. So these I have purchased uh, myself. So uh, first of all, I got this uh, from Waterstones. So I love going on Waterstones website and just looking what they've got. And then, you know, I, I use my little promo code. I've also got my little uh, Waterstones club voucher thing. So I get points every time on there. And um, if you spend a certain amount, you get free delivery as well. And, and Waterstones delivery is really good. Can I just say that? It's like proper fast. Um, yeah, really impressed, actually. It turns out really, really quick. Anyway, so the first book I want to show you is by Liz uh, Kessler, who I have read before. I can't remember what book I've read. I know I've read her book and I really liked it. And this is called When the World Was Ours, Three Friends, Two Sides, One Memory. And apparently this is inspired. It's based on a true factual story. Um, I know this is going to be one of those books that I'm just going to have a big old box of tissues with me because it's going to be very emotional, very upsetting. Um, it says here, I tell myself I will wake up in a moment and find myself back in Vienna. Leo and Max will turn up around the next corner telling me they're coming too. All the no Jew signs around the city will disappear. Nobody really hates us. It was all just a bad, bad, awful nightmare. Someone is waiting at the situation, at the situation, sorry. Someone is waiting at the station to tell us that it's not real, any of it. But none of these things will happen. Um, yeah, it's it's going to be like, you know, kind of, as I say, a very sad, emotional Holocaust um, related book. And I yeah, I just get very upset with these kind of books. But I do think it's important that you read them. And I think we should never forget what happened and learn from, le you know, learn from the past. And I am myself Jewish. So I always find these like extra like triggering and stuff. But as I, say, I do think it's important that these books are keep, you know, being brought out and stuff about the Holocaust and what happened. And uh, and as I say, this is based on uh, a true story. I read up some reviews on it online and people are like, oh, my God, you know, it's really, really good. But, yeah, you will need a big old box of tissues, basically. So very emotional uh, read on the way there for me. Um, OK, so the next book, I always have trouble saying this word and it's really embarrassing. So it's The Lost Apothecary. Apo <laughs> so I'm going to have to ask Nathan, hold on. Apothecary. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. Thank you. I literally, I cannot say this word. And I've tried to do this um, word, like, you know, rehearsal, as, as I say, for, for this kind of video, because I just can't say the word. And each time I say it, I still can't. Anyway, this is it. A beautiful, beautiful cover. Loving the flowers and the bottle. And oh, it just sounds and looks so beautiful. So this novel is by Sarah Penner. I'm going to turn it, actually, I'll take the dust jacket off a minute. Uh, oh, it's bright yellow inside. Um, and it's a purple book. Look, how cool is that? Like purple and uh, and the silver there on the side. 
and bright yellow. Yeah, I saw this book um, kind of on, where did I see it? On uh, Bookstagram, on Instagram, there's this thing called hashtag Bookstagram and people put pictures of their books they're reading and, you know, stuff like that, all booky things basically with photos of books and stuff but I saw this and I'll be honest I was drawn in from that beautiful cover and uh, it is beautiful but once I read about it I also was excited as well because it sounds really really good so it says a forgotten history a secret network of women a legacy of poison and revenge welcome to the lost oh no I've got to say it again apothecary apothecary Okay, right. I'm not going to ask Nathan again how to say it because he's watching Pokemon next door. I don't want to get on his nerves. So let me tell you about it. Hidden in the depths of 18th century London, a secret, oh no, a apothecary shop caters to an unusual kind of clientele. Women across the city whisper of a mysterious figure named Nella who sells well-disguised poisons to use against the oppressive men in their lives. But the Apothecary's fate is jeopardised when a newest patron, a precocious 12-year-old, makes a fatal mistake, sparking a string of consequences that echo through the centuries. Uh, meanwhile, in present-day London, aspiring historian Caroline Parswell spends her 10th wedding anniversary alone, running from her own demons, when she stumbles upon a clue to the unsolved apothecary apothecary murders oh that haunted london 200 years ago her life collides with the pocket there is in a, a stunning twist of fate and not everyone will survive uh cracking suspense it says here unforgettable characters intoxicating i think this sounds really good the only negative for me is i know that when i do my reading wrap up after i've read this book I'm going to have to say that word all over again. Let me know in the comment section down below if there's any words out there that you have difficulty saying. I don't know. Maybe I'm just really stupid. I just can't say apothecary. Apothe anyway, moving on to the next book. I can um, say this. It's okay for me to pronounce. Uh, this is later, uh, and it's the brand new book from Stephen King. So, um, yeah, I, I, I absolutely love this cover. Like, I know people are a bit funny about this cover. I am... Um, where was I? Someone said the other day I was saying about this book and uh, I can't remember who it was, but she was like, oh, no, it's awful. The cover's horrible. I was like, really? I think this cover's really awesome. It's like really retro kind of vibe. Like, I don't know, like 70s, 80s kind of look. I don't know. I think the cover's really cool. Um, but yeah, so it's by Stephen King. It's called Later. It says, only the dead have no secrets. Now, here's the thing. I'll be honest with you. I'm not a major Stephen King fan. I know there are a lot of book bookish people out there who absolutely love and read everything that Stephen King does but I've just you know I've tried him in the past I've not really connected with his stories the only book that I read of his that I didn't mind like I thought was okay was The Institute um I thought it was pretty cool I had like a Stranger Things kind of vibe going on and I, I, I did like that one that was okay um but yeah so this is his new one and it's from the Hard Hard Case Crime uh, he must have like other books, I think, in the series. Yeah, look at the back. There's other ones. Um, Joyland looks pretty cool. Looks like it's like a circus theme there, maybe or fairground and stuff. Um, <laughs> this is creepy hand. Like Rrr. anyway, so let me tell you what this one is about. Sometimes growing up means facing your demons. Very true. Right. So the son of a struggling single mother, Jamie Conklin, just wants an ordinary childhood. But Jamie is an ordinary child. Born with an unnatural ability, his mum urges him to keep secret. Jamie can see what no one else can see and learn what no one else can learn. But the cost of using this ability is higher than Jamie can imagine, as he discovers when an NYPD detective draws him in to the pursuit of a killer who has threatened to strike from beyond the grave um it sounds like really interesting creepy thriller but with a bit of like paranormal as well so i'm, you know, I'm gonna give it a go i thought it would sound really cool i saw this on waterstone's website and yeah i just love the cover and i thought the book sounded interesting okay so the next book i want to show you i got in wh smith um honestly it's awful i go into the post office which is now situated in wh smith the post office used to be a separate place like you just go to the post office but now the post office is in um wh smith so every time i go and like post some ebay parcels or whatever letters etc um i have to walk past all the books <laughs> which is like awful for a bookworm um anyway so i ended up seeing this book and i'll be honest i was drawn to the really cute dogs on the front i mean come on 
Look at these cute little dogs. That one looks really sad, actually. <laughs> that one's like, I really don't want to be on this photo shoot. I just, I just don't. I just want to be at home in my dog bowl chilling out. Um, this one just looks like super happy. He's, he's got a really long tongue just hanging out there. This one looks happy because the girl is like, you know, making a bit of an extra fuss. Um, this one's super cute. I don't know what breed of dog that is, but that is that is my kind of dog. Just a little bit of a kind of misfit looking dog. And you got to love a pug. I, I do love a pug dog. Um, A friend, well, an ex-friend of mine, don't talk to anymore, long story, but she used to have a couple of pugs and I literally, I think I only went and saw, saw her most of the time just to see the dogs. <laughs> That's why we're not friends anymore. But anyway, no. Um, And there's the pug on the back there just sitting on the bench. But yeah, I was drawn to this book simply because of the cover with all the cute dogs, but also um, because it's by Morgan Matson, who I, I do like her books. I've read her books before. Um, I think there's a picture. Where's the one I read? Oh, yeah, I've read um, I've read Since You've Been Gone. I think I read Second Chance, Summer as well. I, can't, I read so many books, sometimes I can't remember, but I know I've read that one. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you like those kind of sweet, sugary kind of, you know, young adult, lovey-dovey books, Morgan Matheson is your author. Like she's so good. She writes so sweet and, and that. And I love her book. So mixed with the the cute dogs and the fact that it's an author that I've read before, I was tempted and I bought it. So it's called The Unexpected Everything. Um, so it says here, before the scandal, Andy had important plans and zero of them involved walking an insane amount of dogs, being in the same house as her dad or hanging out with Clark. Now there's a whole summer stretching out in front of Andy without a plan. And Andy always sticks to the plan. But here's the thing. If everything's always mapped out, you can never find the unexpected. And where's the fun in that? <laughs> it's true, though. Like, I'll be honest, I'm a little bit of a planner. Um, I'm not that kind of spur of the moment person. I just like to kind of know what I'm doing, when I'm doing it, what time, etc. Um, But yeah, sometimes when things happen spur of the moment, it, you know, mixes life up a bit, makes it a bit exciting. Um, so I think this book's going to be super sweet, you know. Right, the next one I want to show you. Um, okay, so th th this is a bit embarrassing to confess as a bookworm, but I have never read Shakespeare, like the works of Shakespeare. I don't, I, I know a little bit, obviously, about like Romeo and Juliet, etc. But like, I, I just don't know Shakespeare, um, and I've always felt quite embarrassed about not knowing like the classics and like you know when people have conversations and you're like, oh, I don't know because I've never read Shakespeare. I just, you know, and you're probably thinking, well, didn't you study Shakespeare at school? But Number one, you know, I'm 41. I can't remember like what I studied in school. I was mostly mucking about being naughty, you know, uh, <laughs> giggling and being stupid and stuff. But also, like, I just, I don't think it was my cup of tea either when I was younger, you know. Um, but anyway, so I saw this book. It's just come out. I think, where was it? I think I saw it on um, uh, Instagram, possibly. But anyway, so it's called That Way Madness Lies. And what it is, it's kind of reimagining, re retellings of Shakespeare's uh, stories, like his, his most notable works. Um, it's all been edited by Dahlia Adler, who I've I've read, I've read her book before. Can't remember what one, but I have read her before. I think she did another uh, collection of, of stories as well, an anthology. Hmm. But anyway, so this has all been done by her and, and there's all different authors. If I turn it around, I can show you there's all different authors who have done different stories. And I love it when authors collab on these kind of short story collections. I think it's really it's really nice. And also what I find when I read these, uh, you know, sometimes I've never read anyone's like stuff. And then I read their little short story. And from that, I look them up online and I want to, you know, find out what books they've done. And so it's a great way of being introduced uh, to other authors. But um, I mean, I've read a few of them. I recognise a few names here. But, um, yeah, I just think this is going to be really good. And, and I like the fact that I'll get to know the Shakespeare stories, but in a kind of new modern twist. You know what I mean? So it says 15 celebrated authors put a modern spin on William, William Shakespeare's beloved classics renewed generation and you know not just me but like you know for people who are not familiar with the, Shakespeare's works and stuff this is a great introduction to his 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 works you know I think it's a great great idea I like reimaginings and, and retellings and stuff so um yeah Nathan my fiance he has um like studied and stuff Shakespeare at schools so he remembers a bit so I said once I've read a few of these we can actually have a discussion about Shakespeare uh, I can't remember what his favorite one was I'm not going to ask him because he's watching Pokemon, as I say, but he did tell me, but I can't remember. But anyway, so I'm looking forward to this and I can either read the whole book as a whole, like just read each story up one after the other, or I could just pick it up, read a short story, go to one of my other books, come back to it. You know, I don't know. I don't know how I'll do it. But anyway, 
It looks pretty cool though. So if you like Shakespeare, you like reimaginings, check out this one here. That that way madness lies. Okay, so the next book I want to show you is The Radleys. Um, so let me tell you about this. Now, this is The Radleys by Matt Haig. I recently uh, finished reading The Midnight Library also by Matt Haig. And Matt, ha Matt Haig is like one of these really popular authors at the moment. Everyone seems to be raving about him, loving his books. And I have to say, um, I did like The Midnight Library. I give it, I think, I don't know, four out of... Yeah, I think I'll give it a four out of five on Goodreads. So I did really like it. My only negative for me personally is it was a little bit predictable. I kind of could see the way things were going to go. But it was still really well wrote, really sweet and thought provoking. And it dealt with like mental health and depression and stuff like that. And I thought that was really important. Um, So yeah, I, I did really, really enjoy this book. But it's a tiny little bit predictable in my opinion. But that's that's the only thing I would say. But I loved his writing so much that um, while I was reading it, I went on Goodreads to see what else he'd wrote. And out of all of them, this is the one that really appealed to me. And I was like, I'm going to get this. So I went on eBay and I found a really old, like cheap version of it. I think I paid like £3 or something. Free postage as well. Bargain. Um, so yeah, this is called The Radleys. Are you in control of your instincts? So you can probably kind of tell it's got like a spooky vibe. We've got some bats up here in the full moon. Yes, it is about vampires. And, you know, if you know me as a regular viewer, you know that I'm all into my vampire stuff. I love this cover. Honestly, there was another cover that they'd done for this. Actually, I think there's a few different covers for this book, but this is the cover that I chose Um not only because it was the cheapest on eBay, but I just really like this cover anyway because the black and white and the red and the red house in the middle. I just thought it was pretty cool. Um, you know, it's a little bit battered and a bit kind of old looking, but it's all good. It gives it character. I love the back of this book. Like, I just think it looks so cool. Um, I'm not sure if this book is a young adult or if it's an adult fiction. I don't know. But either way, who cares? I read both, so it's all good. So it says, meet the Radleys, an entire family in identity crisis. Um, so we've got, <laughs> look at the fangs in the middle, I love that. We've got Rowan, who never sleeps, wears Factor 60 sunblock. It's a fact. Rowan Radley is a freak. <laughs> I think this is going to be proper funny. Uh, then we've got Clara, who wants to turn vegan, but the lack of meat is making her sick. So is her family. <laughs> then we've got the mum who uh was it say mum papers over the cracks in family suburbia she wouldn't lie to her kids would she and then we've got dad midlife uh gp with a permanent headache he's thirsty so thirsty and then it says enter uncle will cool exciting deadly the prodigal son uh, sorry uncle i said son <laughs> uncle returns uh trailing secrets in his wake and blood quite a lot of sweet sweet blood i just think this sounds really cool um and funny as well and yeah it's matt haig so he's, he, i can tell now that his writing style definitely appeals to me um okay so i've got a couple more to show you i've got a graphic novel on ebay this is anne frank the story of anne frank uh the graphic novel um yeah obviously you know as i said at the beginning of the stream uh, video sorry i am jewish myself and i wanted to just learn even more about anne frank so i thought a nice little graphic novel well i say nice it's not going to be a very happy story is it but you know what i mean um i do like reading graphic novels sometimes more than like an actual story like if i'm kind of learning about a subject does that make sense like i think graphic novels um get into my head more I learn more sometimes from looking at the imagery and, and stuff like that um because I was originally going to buy Anne Frank's diary and just read it and I just thought I don't know it might be a bit much it might really really upset me and also it might just be too intense and stuff but I thought with a graphic novel um yeah I can just I mean I know the basic story obviously but I don't know the ins and outs of, of, of what she went through and stuff so this would be a kind of you know easier way um for me to learn and stuff and I as I say now and again I just really enjoy reading um graphic novels this had a really good review online uh, people really enjoyed this graphic novel so it's Anne Frank there the graphic novel um the imagery is just like the artwork is just amazing in this I think the imagery is really, really good so I've got a few other graphic novels actually in my bedroom I've still not read so I need to get around to doing them um okay next up I'm going to show you the Thunder Girls uh this is by the lovely Melanie Blake so recently I read a book by her called Ruthless Women oh my days that was so good I loved Ruthless Women 
<laughs> it was brilliant. Honestly, check it out. It's really, really good. Um, and so because I loved that book, I also looked up what other books she'd wrote and stuff. And uh, this come up and I was like, wow, this sounds so freaking good. Music brought them together. Betrayal tore them apart. Um, so this is about a girl band, which I've always been really interested in, like music and stuff and pop stars and all the dramas that go on, on behind the scenes and that. Uh, so it says Chrissy, Roxanne, Carly and Anita, an 80s pop sensation outselling and outclassing their competition until it all comes to an abrupt end and three of their careers are over along with their friendship. Um, 30 years later, their old record label wants the band back together for a huge money-making concert, but the wounds are deep and some need this gig more than others. Um, do, 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 do. Oh yeah, In those decades apart, life was far... Sorry, this is really difficult for me to film because I'm reading through my phone. I'm holding my phone filming. <laughs> so I'm like, ah. Um, sometimes the glare from the light makes it hard to read. Anyway, sorry. Uh, in those decades apart, life was far from the dream that they had been living as members of the Thundergirls. Breakdowns, bankruptcy, addiction and divorce played a constant part in their lives. They've been to hell and back and some of them are still there. Can the past be laid to rest for a price or is there more to this reunion than any of them could possibly know? While they all hunger for a taste of success a second time around, someone is plotting their downfall in the deadliest way possible. The Thundergirls. I just think this sounds so good. And like I'm already imagining like different girl bands. This could be about like Spice Girls, Atomic Kitten, you know, girl bands that we know, all saints actually, girl bands that we know who seemed lovely on the outside and oh, we all get on really well. And then you hear afterwards all the dramas that really went on. So yeah, I think this is going to be really, really good. And as I say, Melanie Blake, Ruthless Women, if you've not read it, check it out. It's absolutely amazing. Ooh, so they are the books um, in this haul. However, I'm not finished yet. Don't go. Don't go anywhere. Um, I'm quickly going to show you the book that I'm currently reading. And I want to say a huge thank you to my lovely fiancé, Nathan, for choosing me this book. So basically, once a month, um, he does this thing where he goes around my bookcases. I've got several and also got piles of books as well uh, that aren't like fitting on the bookcase. They just go in piles of books. Um, and basically, he chooses me like a, a mystery book. Like he chooses me like his selected book. So it's a mystery to me until he, he picks it out, basically. I can't remember what book he chose last month, but I really loved it. And this time he's told, he's chose Troll. Um, and this is by D.B. Thorne. And I picked this up ages ago from the works. It was like, as you can see, the, I ripped the um, price tag off. But I got it in like a, a three for a five or set or whatever, because I just thought it sounded pretty cool and it was cheap, you know. Um, so, yeah, out of all the books, he has chose Troll. Um, he's already chose my book for next month as well, but I'm not going to show you now. I'll show you in my reading wrap up video. But that looks good as well. So he chooses very, very well, Nathan. Um so yeah, this is the book I'm currently reading and uh, it says here, Monsters Who Live Online Don't Always Stay There. So basically, I'll just tell you quickly, this is about um, a guy whose daughter um, and him are kind of estranged. Uh, like, he doesn't really talk to her anymore and he, she was a bit of a kind of troublesome teen and he works out in Dubai. She's still in London. And then basically she's gone missing. So he flies back from Dubai to try and kind of, you know, find out what's happened to her. Uh, some people at the police aren't being as helpful as they should be. And the case is kind of like, you know, put on the back burner. They're not really investigating. And yeah, yeah, he, tr he tries to do his own investigation on his own and kind of figure out, you know, what's happened to his daughter. Where is she kind of thing, you know? Um, and yeah, it's basically about that. And, and obviously you also get, the daughter's point of view. So each chapter is told by either the father or the daughter or Turner. And uh, she's going through like she's a, a blogger online and she's getting trolled and stuff. Really horrible stuff. You know, look, for me personally, I get trolled a lot being a YouTuber and doing all my social media and stuff. So reading that, it, it's quite it's quite triggering and quite painful to read this character going through the horrible stuff that she has to go through um, with her troll and the horrible comments and stuff. So, yeah, we're hoping but I'm hoping that he finds her and she's all right and stuff. But yeah, it's a really good thriller. I'm really enjoying it. Um, I would definitely read D.B. Thorne again. I'll look up what books they've done um, because, yeah, really well wrote, really enjoying it. I'm currently on page 60 and I, I literally have been like devouring it. It's so good. So that is my current book. Uh, and really quickly, I'm going to turn on my laptop uh, because I've <laughs> got my seeds there. Um, I'm going to turn on my laptop because I've ordered uh, a couple of books on Waterstones. 
Um, so I'm going to show you uh, what they are because they're on their way. All right, so the first one uh, is called The Lamp Lighters and it's by Emma Stonex. Now, I actually know a bit about this story. It's, it's based on a true story of these um, guys who worked in a lighthouse on this like remote island and stuff. And yeah, it's all a bit creepy in that. I won't ruin the story in case you haven't read the book. But yeah, it's based on this true story and they go missing. No one's ever found out what's happened to them. It's all a bit creepy. There's some like diaries that were left and that. So anyway, I'm not going to ruin it, but look it up um, because there's a really like interesting backstory to this. So yeah, this is the like uh, kind of what would have happened. That it's, it's told from the point of view of the wives of the guys that got uh, went missing and stuff so it's going to be quite interesting to find out like a fiction version obviously but you know what the author thinks happened to them kind of thing uh, and I've managed to get the signed edition uh, which has also got sprayed edges let me show you hold on look at that with the sprayed edges I mean that looks awesome so yeah because that one's coming so this one's a pre-order doesn't come out till the 1st of April um, and it's called Girl in the Walls also signed edition um, it's really cool because sometimes they're the same price to get the signed edition. Do you know what I mean? Um, and this is by AJ, I don't know how to say his name. Sorry, it's Gnus, Guns, Gnus, I don't know. Um, but wow, look at this cover. She doesn't exist. She can't exist. Ah, the girl in the walls just sounds so freaking good. Also, signed edition um, is Daughters of Night. This has been on my radar for ages. And it's by Laura Shepard Robinson. What a good name, Laura. Anyway, <laughs> this is like a really kind of creepy story. Look at this. Uh, like a murder, thriller, mystery, and a bit creepy as well. So it's set in London, 1782. Um, women are getting murdered. And basically, like the main character is kind of trying to find out who's murdering them. And it's something to do with their husband as well. And she befriends um, this thief taker who kind of helps out with the investigation and inquiry. So, yeah, it's going to be a, a very dark thriller. I pre-ordered this ages ago, so I'm waiting for this to turn up. This is the uh, new Lee Bardigo book, Bardigo, 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 <laughs> I can never say it, Rule of Wolves. And uh, this is number two of King of Scars series. Oh, I can't wait for this one. This is going to be amazing. And the cover, look at that cover. Oh, and also coming on uh, Netflix soon is is the series. So that's going to be pretty cool. And this this is going to be a while yet. I've still got to wait till like May time for this. <laughs> I want it now. Um, this is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I've got that on pre-order. I absolutely love Taylor Jenkins' read. Oh, my God. Her books are amazing. Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, Daisy Jones and the Six. Like, oh, this is going to be just amazing. I've just got to wait that little bit longer for this one. And the last book I'm going to show you, um, hopefully... Oh, sorry. One of them pop-ups come up then. I was like, what's that? Um, yeah. <laughs> hopefully, I'm going to be sent this as a proof copy, pre-release. If not, I would buy this one, but... I'm hoping, I'm hoping that I'm going to get a copy um, from the publishers. But yeah, this is Triflers Need Not Apply. Uh, man shall inherit the earth unless she kills him first. <laughs> Camilla Bruce. And this story is actually based on um, the life and times of history's original female serial killer. So yeah, Belle Sorensen loves men. She loves them to death. Look at this cover though. This just looks amazing. That book doesn't come out till like August time. So if I can get a pre-release copy, yes. <laughs> but we'll see. Um, anyway, that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Sorry once again that I couldn't say this blooming word. Ap apothecary. Apothecary. Um, but yeah, hopefully you've had us to say enjoyed the video and got some book ideas. Let me know if you've got any book recommendations down below in the description box. Also, don't forget I have a virtual book club if you want to join. It's uh, the Minx Book Club on Goodreads. I'll put the link down below. Come and join. The um, subject we're going to be doing for uh, next month is pick a book, any book that you want to read um, with a word like a colour in the title. Uh, for example, I'm going to I think I'm like 90% certain I'm going to be reading um, The Colour Purple. Uh, so, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, it's pretty good fun. I like being in the book club. We've got some great people in there, fellow bookworms. 
Um, so yeah, if you want to join the book club, it's all good. Come and join. Links down below to that on Goodreads. Also come and follow me on Goodreads if you want to know what books I've read and reading and want to read, etc. My link uh, to my book, uh, Goodreads page is down below as well. Um, please go and check out my other YouTube channel, MinxLaw123 ASMR. The link is down below for that. On that channel, I do videos to help people with anxiety, insomnia, just kind of relaxation, chill out videos basically so go check out my other channel um all my links to my social media are down below so twitter instagram i'm on tiktok as well so come and follow me on there at minxlaura123 asmr um but anyway i'm gonna end this video now because i'm rambling but i hope you've enjoyed it i hope you've enjoyed my bookish video um and yeah i'm just gonna read now i think i'm gonna go make a nice cup of tea cup of tea and have a little read of Troll. So, um, yeah, thank you for watching. Please give this video a big thumbs up. Um, comment, share, subscribe, smash the bell to all notifications. And I'll see you really soon. Happy reading. Boy, boy. Boy, boy.